I just want to say for one second, um, one of the great blocks to creativity and to access and to education and to everything, which we keep hearing is hunger, seems to be something we hear a lot. And I just want to take literally 10 seconds to ask you for a favor. All of you have smartphones. Will you go to the App Store and download an app called Share the Meal? The World Food Program has launched this incredible initiative. You download it for free, and then for 50 cents, you feed a child for a day. Um, they've done incredible work with Syrian refugees in Lebanon. They're in Malawi right now. And that meal makes it possible for young kids to think and to dream and to imagine and to work, just like all these amazing delegates and us have had the opportunity to do. So, are you downloading it, though? OK. Because I'm going to check, OK? <laughs> um, Bal Kama is coming to us today from Papua New Guinea. He's 29 years old, and he's a PhD scholar at law school, in, the, in law, yes? Yes. It gets even better, actually. He is also a lecturer at the University of Canberra in Australia. He has founded his own Scholars Foundation, which gives scholarships and mentors young people and students in the highlands of Papua New Guinea who would otherwise not have access to education. Um, he is a founding member of the Commonwealth Youth Health Network. Um, he's also a recipient of the Commonwealth Pacific Young Person of the Year Award this year. Yes. And when we were speaking backstage, um, Baal said to me that he was a villager. He grew up in a village of only 8,000 people. And if it wasn't for education, he wouldn't be sitting here today. Education is liberation. And he's going to speak to us more on that now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fatima. Councillors, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to be here. I grew up in one of the most remote and isolated parts of the world, in those rural mountains, villages of Papua New Guinea. Um, towering mountains and uh, dense forests and mighty rivers. Access to basic services such as water, um, health services, roads is often difficult. And people would walk for days and weeks to have access to those things. And the same is also true for access to education. I know my mates would walk for hours from one village to another to go to school, and so is myself. And those schools lack basic, basic resource services, such as library books and classrooms, and there's no technology that we enjoy today. And for me, I would sit on the floor because there was no desk. I would use cardboard to write on because there was no notebook. That was my experience. And Dr. Mohamed Yanis talked about life in the villages and the struggle for it. Well, that was my experience. It, it, he speaks directly to me. In Papua New Guinea, approximately 87% of the population lives in those villages. And most of them on less than one dollar every day. And for many of these families, when it comes to education, they have to choose between school and survival. Unable to afford the school fee of about $100, the families had to make a choice when sending their kids to school. And often it is one child, and typically a boy over a girl. That's because the society is a male-dominated society and there's a bias, inherent bias, for males. And so gender, gender inequality, and a lack of access to educational resources and career opportunities are some of the serious barriers that challenges youths and young people in those remote villages in Papua New Guinea and, of course, around the world. I was one of them that was challenged, but I was fortunate to overcome these challenges and currently did, doing my doctorate in law in Australia. But I feel a sense of duty and privilege to assist those who are caught in this almost 
continual cycle of disadvantage. That is why I started the Kama Scholars Foundation. KSF is an education empowerment organization that provides scholarships to students in those remote villages, support remote schools with computers and library books, and promote gender equality in a male-dominated society. As Fatima said, I did meet um, uh, Queen Elizabeth, and I was awarded the 2016 Cornwall Pacific Young Person of the Year for the work that KSF does. <laughs> Since our establishment in uh, 2013, the foundation has given 57 scholarships, and 85% are all female. <laughs> By doing, it has brought to attention to the community that females, girls, are as, are as equally capable or even more than their sons. <laughs> KSF has also provided 21 computers to schools in those villages in a bid to promote computer learning in those rural schools. For one of those schools, there was no road access, so my volunteers had to walk for eight hours through mountains inf infested with leeches carrying those computer sets to the schools. And with computer being a new thing for those village schools, uh, we went ahead and we hired a, um, a computer expert who had to teach those teachers how to use computers, and again, those teachers had to, had to teach their students. And some of those teachers had to walk for eight to 10 hours just to attend a three days course. But I am delighted here to say that those schools that we have supported are currently the first schools in the country to teach computing in the villages. <laughs> Fundamental to our efforts is the belief that all young people have the right to be part of a generation that embraces technology, creativity, and professionalism. Our scholarship program has proven to be one of an effective tool in removing the educational barriers and allow students to access digital and professional skills. The public sense of recognition and affirmation which the students receive is an inspiration to their community and communicates the value of learning, growing and striving for excellence. While schools have a responsibility to promote and provide an equal educational opportunity for everyone, they often fail to do so. But we must not blame them Instead, we must work to support them. I am reminded there is no one-size-fits-all when it comes to finding the right technology to support schools and the education system. We must adopt our approaches to the individual needs of each society, school, and student. For many schools in the remote PNG and across the world, using computers is the first step towards preparing young men and women to face the challenges of a more globalized world and technologically oriented society. Inclusive and uh, accessible education combined with the right technology has the potential to transform the next generation. But the key to truly achieving an inclusive one young world is to reach out to our peers in the most remote parts of the world. And that is my mission. For those in the most remote parts of the world, we must let them know that their life and their future is not forgotten, despite their distance, their inaccessibility, and their remoteness. Their future is and must always be our concern. Thank you. <laughs>